There are about 6 million people in uh, the U.S. that have heart failure. The annual incidence is about three quarters of a million or a little bit higher than that. Uh, so the burden is quite extensive. And unfortunately, the epidemiologic trends are such uh, that this, uh, this will increase by about 25% by the year 2030. So not only is the burden quite high right now, it is expected to uh, go up pretty substantially as well. Uh, there are certain groups of people who are at a particularly higher risk for developing heart failure. So those people who have uh, diabetes, uh, obesity, uh, uh, high blood pressure, uh, valvular heart disease. So these are the people that have a higher risk of developing heart failure. Uh, but I think probably the biggest reason why the, the incidence and the prevalence of heart failure is increasing is because of the aging of the population as most heart failure cases are in older patients. So older patients are at a higher risk. So uh, heart failure is a state in which you have generalized uh, endothelial dysfunction and decreased nitric oxide uh, production. Uh, nitric, nitric oxide uh, is the molecule that goes into the cell and then binds to this enzyme called soluble guanylate cyclase. Uh, and after binding that, uh, that uh, in, leads to increased production of cyclic GMP. So cyclic GMP signaling further down uh, in multiple organs of the body has a lot of beneficial effects, but in terms of cardiovascular system, you know, it causes vasodilation, improved endothelial function, decreased fibrosis of the heart, remodeling of the heart. So there are all of these beneficial effects uh, that occur in the cardiovascular uh, system. Uh, but in the presence of oxidative stress, there is substantial uh, reduction in nitric oxide and subsequently uh, the action of the soluble guanylate cyclase. So what Verisiquat does, it's a novel uh, medication uh, that sort of bypasses that nitric oxide step and just directly uh, binds and stimulate the soluble guanylate cyclase directly increasing the, uh, the CGMP uh, production and all the downstream beneficial effect on the cardiovascular system. Uh, so there is certainly an unmet need in patients with heart failure reduce ejection fraction. If you look at over the past uh, three decades or so, there have been a lot of uh, good medications that have come out to show benefit and outcomes for these patients. Uh, but remember, we started at such a bad point, you know, people had 30, 35% one-year mortality, that even with all of those therapies, uh, the reduction uh, in mortality, you know, even in the stable patients, we're talking about 10% uh, or so, uh, annual mortality. Now, there's a special uh, high-risk group of patients called worsening heart failure. These are the patients who have been stable sort of in the outpatient setting on whatever the medication that you were giving them, but now uh, that therapy is not enough for them, and now they're developing worsening heart failure symptoms requiring escalation of therapy or hospitalization in many, many cases. And this, these patients, once they get hospitalized, uh, we are talking about 25 to 30 percent one-year mortality, so a much higher risk group of patients. So that's where uh, this medication, Verisiguard, was tested in the Victoria trial. And what we found was that the primary endpoint uh, for combined uh, heart failure hospitalization and cardiovascular mortality was uh, benefit uh, was beneficial. Uh, now, uh, you know, what is the magnitude of benefit? It has to be sort of looked at in uh, both. A relative risk reduction and absolute risk reduction because the amount of benefit is uh, actually related uh, not only to how efficacious the drug is, uh, but as well uh, as what is the baseline patient population which was uh, admitted in, uh, in, in the uh, clinical trial, what were the inclusion and exclusion criteria. So as mentioned, this was a high risk group of patients. Uh, the primary endpoint was statistically significant. There was a 10% relative risk reduction uh, but it was a very short follow-up of about 10 months on average because these patients had such a high risk, uh, about uh, three times a higher risk than some of the recent heart failure trials that we have seen. Uh, so therefore, the event accumulation was much faster. Uh, and uh, as I said, the average follow-up was about 10 months or so. So if you actually look at the absolute risk reduction, uh, there was about a 4% absolute risk reduction, uh, which is the same or better than some of the recent trials that we have seen.